How's it going everyone? Austin Honecker here. I just wanted to come on here for a while and give them a review for All Elite Wrestling's AW Dynamite from last night, which was September 15th, 2021. I gotta say it was awesome from start to finish. For the matches, match one, it was Adam Cole versus Frankie Kazarian. That was a great match, but the ending to it, Adam Cole went over with the last shot. Well, after the match, Adam Cole got a microphone and cut a promo saying, it's time for storytelling with Adam Cole, baby. And then Adam Cole was saying that, um, how, how it was talking about how the elite, which are, you know, how Kenny Omega and, and the Young Bucks, which are Matt and Nick Jackson, were his true friends, and talking about how uh, AEW was the best company in the world, and how he can't stand three people that work in AEW, and that's Christian Cage, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus, and everything. And then Adam Cole was, and then Ad, then Adam Cole issued a challenge to team with the Young Bucks to face. Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express, which are Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, in a six-man tag team match on AEW Rampage Grand Slam next week. And everything. Which, that was cool. That was after the match, by the way. Match two, it was FTR, which are Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler versus... Matt Seidel and Dante Martin, that was a great match, but the ending to it, FTR went over cause Cash Wheeler pinned Dante Martin with the big rig from Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. Match three, it was match two by the way, match three, it was Jade Cargill versus Layla Hirsch, that was a great match, but the ending to it, Jade Cargill went over with the Jaded. That was match three, by the way. Match four, it was Darby Allen versus Sean Spears. That was a great match, but the ending to it, Darby Allen went over with the coffin drop. Well, after the match, as Sting and Darby Allen were celebrating Darby Allen's victory, FTR, which are Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, came into the ring, and and Sting and Darby Allen got into a brawl with FTR. So Sting, Darby Allen, Sting, Darby Allen, and FTR, Sting, Darby Allen, and FTR were brawling with each other and everything, and Cash Wheeler laid Darby Allen out with a German suplex after beating the shit out of him, and then Sting was beating the shit out of Dax Harwood, but Tully Blanchard came into the ring with a steel chair and um, hit Sting in the back with it. Sting was get, was a tr was getting ready to attack Tully Blanchard, be trying, trying to beat the shit out of Tully. Bl Sting was trying to beat the shit out of Tully Blanchard, but FTR ganged up on Sting and beat the shit out of him, and then, um, and then FTR executed the mind breaker to Sting, and then FTR held Sting down, and Tully Blanchard wiped Sting's, wiped the face paint off of Sting's face with a towel and everything, and then FTR and Tully Blanchard stood tall. Chet was cool. Um, uh, and, that was match four, by the way, and, Match five, which was the main event, it was John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus 2.0, which are Matt Lee and Jeff Parker. That was a great match, but the ending to it, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston went over cause John Moxley pinned Jeff Parker with the violent crown from Eddie Kingston and John Moxley. Now, after the match, Minoru Suzuki, well, yeah, well, after the matches, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston were celebrating their victory, 
Minoru Suzuki came out to the ring and distracted John Moxley and Eddie Kingston and Lance Archer came out, dragged Eddie Kingston out of the ring and and Ed, and Lance Archer and Eddie Kingston were brawling with each other outside the ring and in the crowd and everything and then John Moxley and Minoru Suzuki were brawling with each other all over the place as well. That was cool. Now besides the matches, yeah, now besides the matches, the Lucha Brothers, which are Ray Phoenix and Pena El Cerro Miedo and Alex Abrahantes cut a promo and along with uh, what, uh, the Butcher, the Blade, and the Bunny, you know, towards each other. Well, Ray Phoenix was talking about how the Lucha Brothers and the Butcher and the Blade were friends, but now they're enemies, and the Butcher was talking about how they wanted uh, to get their hands on the Lucha Brothers and everything, and then uh, Pena El Cerro Mieto was saying, Butcher, well, th well, th well, P P Pena El Cerro Mieto was saying, was, was saying something, but I couldn't understand it because it was in Spanish, but Alex Abrahantes translated and said, Pena says, Butcher and Blade, this Friday night, they're coming at, the Lucha Bro, we are coming after you all, we are coming after both of you, and we're putting the AEW Tag Team titles on the line on Friday night on Rampage. And then, uh, the Butcher and the Blade, well, the Butcher was saying, you're on, and everything, so, at which, all that was cool. Um... Let me see. Um, oh yeah, um, Tony Schiavone interviewed Fuego del Sol and Sammy Guevara, and Tony Schiavone was pretty much asking Fuego del Sol about his new car and everything. And then Fuego del Sol was saying, "Miro, I want a rematch against you for the AEW TNT title, and I'll do anything to get that rematch." Hell. I'll put my own, put, put my brand new car on the line. So what do you say, Miro? And then Sammy Guevara was saying, Fuego, you really gonna put your title on the line? You really gonna put your car on the line just for just for a shot at the AEW TNT title? And Fuego Del Sol was saying, yeah, said yes, sir, and everything. That was cool. Um, MJF. And Wardlow came out to the ring, and MJF had a microphone, and MJF was saying was pretty much pretty much uh, saying how he offended some people with these comments last week in Cincinnati, Ohio, on AEW Dynamite, and how he didn't give a shit whether he offended anybody or not, and um, and then MJF was talking about how he was a religious man and everything and how everybody was so sympathetic towards Brian Pillman Jr. and everything and then MJF was talking about was pretty much talking to the spirit of Brian Pillman Sr. saying how his widow is a meth, is a meth head named Metheny and how he was going to destroy his son Brian Pillman Jr. and everything and and uh, MJF continued to talk more shit and Brian Pillman Jr.'s entrance music hit, the Varsity Blondes music music entrance hit, and MJF sent Wardlow up to the ramp, um, uh, to to beat the shit out of Brian Pillman Jr. So Wardlow went up the ramp, and then, um, and then Brian Pillman Jr. came in from behind and with a with a steel chair, and then and MJF was cower was cowering away in the corner, begging Brian Pillman Jr. not to attack him and everything. And then Wardlow came down and then uh, and, and came down to the ring and took the steel chair away from Brian Pillman Jr. and um, MJF got out of the ring, but Brian Pillman Jr. ended ended up slapping. 
Wardlow in the face, and Wardlow tried to attack Brian Pillman Jr., but Brian Pillman Jr. flipped Wardlow over out, out over the ring, out of the ring and everything, and then Brian Pillman Jr. stood tall with the steel chair while MJF and Wardlow were outside the ring look, staring down Brian Pillman Jr. and everything. That was cool. Jim Ross interviewed Brian Pillman Jr., and Jim Ross was pretty much talking about how last week he was embarrassed for Brian Pillman Jr.'s father, the late, great Brian Pillman Sr., and how he was embarrassed for him because of MJF insulting him and the Pillman family and everything, and and uh, talked about how um, he's known Brian Pillman Jr.'s father, the late, great Brian Pillman Sr., all of his lot for all of his lot uh, throughout a lot of his life with his career and and how he he knew about Brian Pillman Jr. being born 28 years ago and everything, and then Brian Pillman Jr. was talking about how MJF has been spoon fed his whole life and has gotten everything he's wanted and everything, and then talked about how. Um. Uh, he he's how he he himself he Brian Pillman Jr. himself has had a rough upbringing and uh, he had to earn what he got and everything and then talked about how he was going to destroy MJF next week and and New and Queens New York and everything and then uh and. Talked about how he was how he, he was gonna whoop MJF MJF sass and everything. That was cool. Um, Alex Marvez interviewed Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express, which are Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Marco Stunt. And Alex Marvez was pretty much asking Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express about Adam Cole's comments and his challenge to face him and the Young Bucks for them to face him and the Young Bucks on Rampage next week and everything and then Jungle Boy was was pretty much say, talking about how Adam Cole just likes to talk shit and how he's has he's a better wrestler than him and how he has better hair than him and then Christian C Christian Cage was saying Jungle Boy I'm sorry to cut you off but Adam Cole you, you say you can't stand us? Well, you, d you do have great friends. Friends, great friends that use their executive vice presidential status to do whatever they want and, um, and if, if it wasn't for AEW, you'd still be in the developmental program in the other company. And the other company and everything. And then Jungle Boy was saying, So with that being said, Adam Cole, the Jurassic Express and Christian Cage, we accept your challenge, Super Click. And we'll see you next week on AEW Rampage Gl Gl Grand Slam. And everything. That was cool. Um, Suzuki Goon, which are Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki cut a promo, and Lance Archer was saying, John Moxley, you wanted Minoru Suzuki last week on AEW Dynamite in your hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, that was unfair, because Minoru Suzuki got disrespected last week on AEW Dynamite. And as you know, Minoru Suzuki and I We've been teaming for many, many years in New Japan Pro Wrestling as Suzuki Goon, and we've been unstoppable in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, Minoru Suzuki and I, we want to fight you and we want to fight you and Eddie Kingston. So be ready. So be ready to die, boys. And then Minoru Suzuki was saying. Suzuki Goon Ichiban and everything, which that was cool. Malachi Black came out 
with a microphone and cut a promo saying, Everyone of the House of Black, please rise. As we have an enemy, as we have someone wearing the collar of our enemy. And so Rosario Rosario Dal Rosario Dawson from the Go Big Show was in the crowd wearing a wearing a nightmare family jacket. And so Malachi Black took offense to that, and Malachi Bl Malachi Black got out of the ring, and Rosario Dawson uh, came through the crowd, and Malachi Black was getting ready to attack Rosario Dawson, but Cody Rhodes came through the crowd, and uh, Rosario Dawson jumped on Malachi Black's back, and Malachi Black threw Rosario Dawson off of him, and then Cody Rhodes came charging at Malachi Black, and so Cody Rhodes and Malachi Black were brawling right by ringside and beating the shit out of each other and went to brawling in the crowd and beating the shit out of each other and everything up in the crowd and everything as well. That was cool. Um, the Bunny cut a promo talking about how Anna, how the Queen Slayer Anna J is back and everything and and the bunny talked about why she attacked Anna J after her match against Ashley Diembois on last night on AEW Dark and everything and said the reason why she attacked Anna J after the match is because Anna J stuck her nose into her business and everything and then the bunny talked about how she was going to face Anna J tomorrow this fr on Friday on AEW Rampage and everything that was cool. Um, Alex Marvez interviewed Anna J along with Ty Conti and the Dark Order, which are Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, John Silver, Alex Rennell, John John Sil Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, John Silver, Five Ten, and Colt Cabana. And Alex Marvez was pretty much asking. Anna J about her match with the Bunny on AEW Rampage this Friday, and Anna J was getting ready to talk, but Evil Uno interrupted and said that she was he was happy for that Anna J was back and everything, and then um, and then Alex Reynolds came along and and was saying, oh, oh so so oh here we go again the 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 jackass that thinks he's the leader of the Dark Order and has to Take away Anna J's moment. Uh, go figure. And Evil Uno was saying, well, well, it's good to see you again, Alex, and everything. And then, uh, and then, so, and then Evil, and then so all the Dark Order started bickering, and Anna J broke it up and was saying, all right, enough. If this is what, what if this is all you all are going to do, is bit is fuss and bicker, then I don't want you all at ringside with me during my match with the bunny on AEW Rampage. Well, John Silver asked if he could be in Anna Jay's corner, and Anna Jay said no. And then Ty Conti said, Anna, Anna, I will be in your corner Friday night in your match against the bunny on AEW Rampage. And so... Uh, Anna J and Ty Conti left, and then the Dark Order looked on and continued to get into it and everything. That was cool. Um, Dan Lambert, the men of the year, which are Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, and some of the American Top Team, which are Junior Dos Santos, Jorge Masvidal, Paige Van Zant. Ariel Hunter, I think is her name, and countless others from the American Top Team were out in the ring, and Dan Lambert had a had a microphone and cut a promo talking about how AEW was a shit promotion and how um, how the AEW fan base were a bunch of nerds, uh, were a bunch of nerds and everything, and then uh, talked about how. Uh, AEW doesn't treat rest that doesn't take re professional wrestling serious, and how 
there's there's a guy that's going to that that is like 100 some pounds that throws thousands of super kicks and does a bunch of backflips and everything and then talk, and then uh talk shit talk some more shit about AEW and everything and then the inner circle which are Chris Jericho and Jake Hager came out and um and uh Dan Lambert got pissed off and was saying was telling the production team of AEW to turn Chris Jericho's theme theme song off and Dan Lambert was talking about how the 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 idiot fa the idiot fan base of AEW don't really know the song Judas by Fozzie. They just Googled it on their phones and everything. And then Chris Jericho was calling Dan Lamb. Chris Jericho had a microphone and was cutting a promo. And Chris Jericho was calling Dan Lambert a fat uh, a fat piece of shit and was uh, saying that was saying, what's your problem, Lambert? You come out here like you're some grumpy old man uh, talking down on the AEW clouds and the AEW fans and the promotion and everything. And then Dan Lambert was going on talking more shit about AEW. And Chris Jericho was saying, um, was saying, uh, well, Dan Lambert was talking more shit about AEW and was saying that uh, he said, Chris Jericho, I'm surprised it was you that came out here to defend these idiots because Tony Khan is not the not the man of AEW. You are. Uh, so that's so that's what so that surprised me that you came out here to defend these idiots. And Chris Jericho was saying, "Well, Dan Lambert, we've we've heard enough." out of you co coming here every week to talk shit about AEW. So we've stepped up and we are answering the challenge to the men of the year and everything. And then Dan Lambert issued the challenge saying, well, Chris Jericho, how about you? How about you and your friend Jake Hager there challenge accept the challenge of the men of the year next week uh, how, how, well, Dan Lambert was saying so Chris Jericho how about you and your buddy there take on the men of the year Chris Jericho said well that's what we're out here for Dan Lambert we're out here we're out here to shut you all up and so how about we do it right here right now and so Chris Jericho and Jake Hager were Chris Jericho and Jake Hager were getting ready to come down to the ring, but Dan Lambert was saying, "Whoa, whoa, 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 Chris, you and your buddy there, you all stay right there, because your match with the men of the with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, it's not going to happen tonight in this trash city, in this in this trash state of New Jersey. We'll do it next week." In Queens, New York, Chris Jericho said, "Well, Dan Lambert, we accept because we've dealt with so many MMA fighters. Jake, my my boy Jake Hager here is an MMA fighter, and I've had my dealings with MMA fighters in my career as well. So, Dan Lambert, we accept and everything. Jet was cool." Um. Um, the Gun Club, which are Billy, Austin, and Colton Gunn, cut a promo, and Billy Gunn was talking about how the, how AEW says that wins, wins and losses matter, but let me give some flashback. Let me give some throwbacks. Me and Colton in a tag team. Colton says undefeated. Me and Austin, me and Austin in a tag team. Austin says, undefeated. Me, Colton, and Austin in trios competition. And Colton and Austin both say, undefeated. And Billy Gunn is saying, you want to know why we took out Paul White 
it's because we've been disrespected and we we've been feeling disrespected in AEW since day 1 and the gun club is going to prove why we're so damn great and everything which that was cool um Andrade El Idolo cut a promo Andrade El Idolo and Jose cut a promo and um and Andrade El Idolo was talking about how he 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 wants to fight for himself and everything and then Andrade El Idolo asked Jose uh why he done what he did, you know, by distracting the referee with the taser and everything. And Jose was saying, Chavo told me to. And Andrade El Idolo was saying, well, Chavo is not the boss. I am. So, Chavo, you're fired. And because I fight for myself. Because I can beat Pac or anyone on the AEW roster because I am the kingpin and everything. That was cool. Um, Team Taz, which are Taz and Hook, came out and confronted CM Punk at the commentary booth, and Taz was going on saying that, asking, t saying to CM Punk, you're trying to take my job. And CM Punk was saying, I'm not trying to take your job. And so CM Punk and so Taz kept going on and on to CM Punk. CM, so CM Punk took off the headset and Taz backed up. But CM Punk and Hook stared each other down. And Powerhouse Hobbs came out from behind and attacked CM Punk from behind. And CM Punk was fighting back to Powerhouse Hobbs, but Hook held. CM Punk down with the Dragon Sleeper and then Powerhouse Hobbs continued to attack CM Punk and throughout the whole time Taz was barking orders and talking shit to CM Punk and then after Powerhouse Hobbs beat the shit out of CM Punk Powerhouse Hobbs ordered Hook to clear the announce table so Hook cleared the announce table and Powerhouse Hobbs dragged CM Punk over to the announce table and Powerhouse Hobbs executed the choke slam to CM Punk through the announce table. So Team Taz, which are Taz, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Hook stood tall and everything. That was cool. Um, Sean Spears cut a promo talking about saying Darby Allen. I'm the I'm generic. I'm the piece of shit. You're right in all corners, because tonight I'm I'm gonna give you I'm gonna beat you again and and give you your second loss towards me in AEW and everything. That was cool. Um, Tony Shab Tony Shabani interviewed Brian Danielson. And Tony Schiavone was pretty much asking Brian Danielson why he came to AEW and why he, cho why he wants to fight Kenny Omega and everything. And then uh, Brian Danielson, before he even got the chance to talk, Kenny Omega and Don Callis came out. And Don Callis was pretty much talking about how he's heard enough out of, Dan out of, out of, Brian, out of Brian Danielson and everything. And... Um, uh, well, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Tony, Tony Schiavone interviewed Brian Danielson. And to Tony Schiavone was asking Brian Danielson why he came to AEW to fight Kenny Omega and everything. And then before Brian, before Brian Danielson could have a chance to talk, Kenny Omega and Don Callis came out. And Don Callis had the microphone. And Don Callis was pretty much saying that he's heard enough out of Brian Danielson and everything and then uh and then uh and then called Brian Danielson a mark just like the fans and called him a piece of shit and everything and was going on and on talking shit about Brian Danielson and how Kenny Omega was great and everything and then 
Um, and then Brian Danielson told Don Callis to shut up and everything. And then uh, Brian Danielson was saying, I came here to talk to Kenny Omega, the god of pro wrestling, the the best bout machine. I, I didn't come to talk to you, Don Callis. I came to talk to Kenny Omega, you carny piece of shit. And then, you, you piece of shit. And then Don Callis backed up, and Brian Danielson was saying, So, Kenny Omega, you're the god of pro wrestling. You're the best bout machine. Well, let me tell you that, let, let me ask you, let me ask you this. You wanna, you wanna fight me next, you, you wanna, you wanna match against me? And Don Callis was saying, uh, he said, so what do you say, Br Brian Danielson was saying, I want to match against you, Kenny Omega, so what do you, what do you say? And Don Callis, Don Callis was saying, our answer is no. Brian, and Brian Danielson said, shut up, Don Callis, you piece of shit. And Don Callis backed off, and then, uh, and then Brian Danielson was saying, so, Kenny Omega, I've heard rumors that you don't have any confidence in yourself. Well, I think that's a lie because I feel like you don't have no balls to face me. And Kenny Omega got the microphone and said, Brian Danielson, you want to match against me? My answer is yes. So Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega stared each other down while Don Callis was Don Callis was pissed off and everything. Jet was cool. Miro cut a promo. Um, yeah, Miro cut a promo, talking about how everyone he's faced, he's defended the AEW TNT title against, has moved on to bigger and better things, but one man hasn't, and that's Fuego del Sol, and. Miro was saying, Fuego, why do you challenge me for the, for the TNT title again when I've already beaten you? Well, since you're putting your car on the line and since you re really want a rematch against the Redeemer for the TNT title, I accept. This Friday on AEW Rampage, not only am I going to bash your brains in, but I'm also going to break your car. And your family will end up loving me more than you and everything. Chet was cool. And Matt Hardy cut a promo talking about how Orange Cassidy has made a mockery out of the wrestling business for many years. And how he was going to take everything away from Orange Cassidy, like cut his hair and everything. everything and talked about how he was going to take Orange Cassidy out for good and everything as well. Chet was cool. Now, besides all that, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Excalibur done commentary throughout the whole show. They done awesome as usual. And CM Punk done guest commentary along with Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, and Excalibur from the beginning to the middle of the show. CM Punk done awesome on guest commentary. And the referees for the event were Rick Knox, Paul Turner, Bryce Rimsberg, and Aubrey Edwards. Okay. Bryce Rimsberg refereed the match between... Yep. Yeah. The referees for the event were... Rick Knox, Paul Turner, Bryce Rimsberg, and Aubrey Edwards. Bryce Rimsberg refereed the match between Adam Cole versus Frankie Kaz... At Wait. Bryce Rimsberg refereed the match between Adam Cole versus Frankie Kazarian. Rick Knox refereed the match between FTR versus Matt Seidel and Dante Martin. Aubrey Edwards refereed the match between 
Jade Cargill versus Layla Hirsch. Bryce Rimsberg refereed the match between Darby Allen versus Sean Spears. And Paul Turner refereed the match between John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus 2.0. All the referees done awesome as usual. Now the match card for tomorrow night's AW Rampage. It's going to be the Lucha Brothers, which are Ray Phoenix and wait. Yeah, all the referees done all the referees for the show done awesome as usual. I think I forgot to say that, but I might have said it. But but yeah, I'm just pointing it out again. Well, but it but 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 now yeah now the match card. For AW Rampage, wait, the match card for tomorrow night's All Elite Wrestling's AW Rampage, it's going to be the Lucha Brothers, which are Ray Phoenix and Pena El Cerro Miedo versus the Butcher and the Blade for the AW Tag Team Titles, Miro versus Fuego Del Sol for the AW TNT title. And not only is the AWTNT title on the line, but Fuego Del Sol's car is on the line as well. And Anna J versus The Bunny. Those are the matches that have been announced for AW Rampage tomorrow night. So the match card for All Elite Wrestling's AW Rampage looks like it's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to see it. Also, the match card for next week's all Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite's Grand Slam. The match card for it, it's going to be that's been announced. It's going to be Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho for the AEW Women's Title. Brian Danielson versus Kenny Omega. Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black. MJF versus Brian Pillman Jr. and FTR wait 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 sorry so the match card for next week's All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite's Grand Slam it's going to be Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho for the AEW wait wait so the match card for next week's all Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite's Grand Slam. It's going to be Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho for the AEW Women's Title. Brian Danielson versus Kenny Omega. Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black. MJF versus Brian Pillman Jr. and Sting and Darby Allen versus FTR, which are Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler. Those are the matches that have been announced. But besides the matches that have been announced, CM Punk will be appearing live. Now, the match card for next Friday's All Elite Wrestling's AEW Rampage's Grand Slam, it's going to be Christian Cage and the Jurassic Express, which are Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, versus the Super Click, which are Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, and Adam Cole. The Inner Circle, which are Chris Jericho and Jake Hager, versus Men of the Year, which are Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, and CM Punk. Versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Those are the matches that have been announced for AW Rampage's Grand Slam. So the match card for both AW Dynamite's Grand Slam and AW Rampage's Grand Slam look like look looks like both shows are going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to them and everything. But anyway, I just wanted to come on here for a while and give them a review for. All Elite Wrestling's AEW Dynamite from last night, which was September 15th, 2021. 
like I, like I said, it was awesome from start to finish. And with that being said, my name is Austin Honaker, and I will catch your ass down the road. Peace out.